So we'll start first with uh, talking about, let's say you have a certain uh, planet here, or it could be a certain star, and then you can have another object going around that. So it could be a moon going around the planet, it could be a planet going around a star, or anything. You know, so uh, what's happening here is that the gravity of the the heavier object is acting on the lighter object. The lighter object is also attracting the heavier objects with the same force. But since the lighter object is lighter, it will experience the majority of the acceleration. But later on, I'll show you what could happen if the two objects are closer in mass. So uh, then they'll go around their common center of mass. So we'll do something like that. But let's assume for now that this is the much, much heavier object. So when this goes around, it's primarily going around the center of the of this object. <clears throat> and let's assume for now that it is a perfectly circular motion, not elliptical. So uh, the force of gravity is equal to g big M little m over the distance uh, d squared. And now we're going to use the fact from physics one that if something goes in a circle, the force, uh, the centripetal force necessary to keep it going in a circle is mv squared over r. So that's equal to mv squared over r, where v is the tangential velocity that it has going around the circle, and r is the radius of the circle. Now, since this object is very, very heavy, the radius of the circle is essentially equal to the distance d. So r is equal to d. Now that will change if the two objects are similar in uh, mass, more closer in mass, then r is going to be less than d. Uh, so the center of the circle is going to be somewhere here. So I'll, we'll do that later on. So let's assume now that r is d then. And the little m cancels. And I want to calculate or uh, develop the equation that can, I can connect the d with the v. So according to this, we have g m uh, and, uh, over the d goes over here to the top and gets rid of one of the d. g m over d is equal to v squared. OK? So according to this, the velocity and the d canceled. Uh, so the velocity, the orbit, this is known as the orbital velocity. The orbital velocity of that object is proportional to, so we can call that orbital, is proportional to the square root of gm over d, where mass, uh, ma big M is the mass of the object it's going around. So let's see if this, uh, if this equation is validated for some different planets. Let's say, for example, the Earth, we again can take the day 0.673 times 10 to the negative 11. Mass of the, let's call that big M, mass of the sun is equal to the exact mass, let's use that one. The exact mass of the sun is equal to uh, 1.989 times 10 to the 30. And then the distance, well, that depends on the different planets. So let's say distance of the Earth, we'll use the average distance of the Earth, which is 1 AU, 1.496 times 10 to the 11. 1.496 times 10 to the 11. So if I want to calculate the orbital velocity of the Earth, we orbit Earth, square root of, and uh, that's equal to 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11. <clears throat> now I have uh, uh, 1.989 times this year times 10 to the 30 divided by 1.496 times 10 to the 11th. Okay? And make this uh, times 
10 to the 30 and 11, that's going to make it, um, uh, it's going to make this 19. And then 11 is going to make this 10 to the 8. <coughs> so you could just do this times 10 to the power 8, square root that. And then we change it to kilometers per second. So we have 29.8 kilometers per second, roughly. And if you check the table, there should be an astronomy book or online. You can check it anywhere. Uh, I have the book here, the orbital speed of the the orbital speed of the Earth. It says 29.79. V 29.79. According to that table. So you can see that it is exactly the same, 29.8. I rounded it to 29.8, but it, well, I actually did get 29.79. I kept two decimal places. Okay, so you can see the, that it, we did get the answer. Well, according to this, then, for Mercury should have the fastest speed, it's the closest to the Sun. So essentially, if, according to the formula, then, According to the formula, we have G M over D. If you double the mass of the sun, the orbital speed of the object becomes square root of two times greater. If you quadruple the mass of the sun times four, the orbital speed of planets becomes twice as great. And then the distance is the same way too. If you quadruple the distance, then you have the orbital speed is gonna be uh, <clears throat> one half as much. So a problem could ask something like this. What would the orbital speed of the Earth have been if the Earth was five, uh, let's say, five AUs from the sun and the sun was 20 times heavier? What would the orbit of Earth be if sun is 20 times heavier and Earth is at 5 AU. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, you can compare that with orbital speed that it presently has. So you can say V orbit, you don't have to put the numbers all in all over again. You can just say, well, uh, if, it's, if the mass is um, 20 times heavier than now, and if the distance is five times the distance now, then what happens there? The orbit, uh, we could call this the orbit prime. So this is the new orbital speed. The orbit prime equals square root of four gm over d is equal to two times the v orbit. So the orbital speed of the Earth uh, doubles. That means there is, uh, there'll be half as many days during the year, like 180, right now it's 365, but 182 or 183 days during the year. Because if the orbital speed doubles, the number of days is halved. Okay, so now let's go on further to talk about the period. Uh, the orbital period is how many days it takes this a planet to go around the sun. So, so far we have uh, v is equal to square root of gm over d. But we can express this in terms of the orbital period. The orbital period is the time that a planet takes to go around the sun or time that a satellite takes to go around the planet. So that's e is equal to, uh, the velocity is equal to 2 pi times the distance d divided by uh, the period t. Uh, in, in reality, it's times the radius r of the circle that it is making, but since the radius is the same as the distance, we're going to say that it's equal to d, 2 pi d. Okay. So now how could I get an equation that connects d to t? So the, the way 